Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio and today I'm sharing with you days five and six of the hashtag Art Journal Habit 2019 event, which is happening all of November 2019 and I'm uh, making a video every day. However, today's video does come combine two of the prompts, two different days of prompts, because yesterday's video was for my um, stencil girl design team, creative team, and I didn't want to make to have two videos coming out on the same day. So I decided to combine two days for this video. So this is one of the backgrounds that I had already worked on. It has some scribbling on it from uh, Neo Color 2 crayons when I was showing how you could start a background um, over a gel print. And I wanted to make this quick. I was trying to make these two days a little bit quicker so that I could combine them into one 20 minute video. It's going to be 22 minutes. Sorry, <laughs> that's the best I could do. So I took a stencil that is from Jeannie B. Aaron's Designs, and I will put a link to her Etsy shop in this stencil below the video. Uh, this is a color wheel stencil, and I'm just I'm just kind of in love with it right now. I really like it. So I took some um, Daniel Smith Gold Gesso. Yeah, that's Gesso, not gold paint. And I sponged through the stencil and made a gold impression of it. And then I sponged a little bit on the edges too, just to add in some of that gold. The prompt for today is color. And wow, I love color. <laughs> color is everything to me. Uh, yeah, obviously I have a favorite color. And so it just so happens that this page is mostly purple when it started. And that's my favorite color, but I like every color. I like any color. Some colors I like better than others, but yeah, it just, it makes me happy. Color makes me happy. So that's what this page is about. And it's a pretty simple page. I did some stenciling. I did some scribbling. There's a lot of little scribbly stuff with Neo color on the background. So I continued that kind of a scribbly look with my uh, black Posca pen, which is an acrylic paint pen. Um, it's having trouble getting drawing through all this stuff, so I have to keep scribbling it off on the paper. But that all that black scribbling stuff at the top, that makes really great collage material. So I'll be using it, tearing it up, and using it in collage later. So it's not a waste. I also traced around the stencil over the gesso, and that's when my pen really started to be a jerk. It didn't want to do that, <laughs> but uh, I got it. I got everything traced. I got my color wheel traced, and then I'm writing the words. Color makes me happy. Um, block letters for the color and the happy, and then smaller cursive -y sort of letters in between to make it more interesting. Then I just got out my uh, Sakura Koi Travel watercolor set, and I'm going over the gold gesso with the watercolor. This is mixed media. It's it's okay. It's not a big deal. Uh, if I did get this page wet before I sealed it, I would smear that watercolor. But um, I'm planning on just giving it a spray of matte sealer and it'll be fine. Actually, I'm going to put satin sealer over it because I don't want to ruin, ruin this shimmer. Another thing that makes me happy is shimmer. <laughs> so um, I have a lot of uh, metallic and I even add some more uh, bling on the top of it later. So I'm going through starting with uh, red and then doing red orange, red violet, then violet, you know, all the way through the color wheel. Adding the colors with this Koi uh, Sakura watercolor set and a water brush. I did spritz my little pan first with water to get them ready. And then I'm just picking them up with the water brush. I'm trying to make it darkest on the outside and make it lighter in the center. Um, generally on a color wheel, you'll get uh, color variations by adding white and black or something like that. So I'm gonna try to do a little bit of that, but mostly I just want to make it pretty. I wanna make it colorful. I want it to uh, give the impression of a color wheel and maybe not be too fussy about it. Remember, I'm trying to make this a fast page. <laughs> and this one was really fast, actually. It only took, I don't know, maybe 30 or 40 minutes, maybe. I don't know. No, not long. But I filled out the entire color wheel with watercolor. And then I'm going in with the same watercolors and uh, filling in the the, uh, the bubbly block 
letters that I made um, when I drew them with the black Posca pen. Color makes me happy and making each letter a different color to even more emphasize, you know, what I'm saying here. I like all the colors. I maybe don't love brown that much, but it has its place. It's a neutral. And so it definitely comes out in my artwork, even though I wouldn't like make an entire thing brown. Uh, <laughs> it definitely plays into, uh, you know, a combination with, especially in, in the fall and autumn, there's a lot of brown going on with the reds and the oranges and the yellows, all those warm colors. But on this page, there's no brown. So sue me. <laughs> so then I took the white watercolor and just kind of added some white to the second squares. And then I took the black watercolor and added some black to the third squares, well, the triangles now, uh, just to make it more like a color wheel would be the color variation. But it's, it's not accurate. It's not perfect. It certainly um, isn't any indication of what a real color wheel would look like. So for the finishing touch of this page, I got out some stickles, glitter glue. That's a Ranger product. Uh, it's just, you know, it's glitter glue. <laughs> this is a gold one. Uh, I most often use a translucent uh, one, but this gold was perfect because I had used the gold gesso. I went around all the squares and added a little bit of gold, added some gold to the color makes me happy. And um, yeah, that was it for day five. I had to let it dry. So here comes the close-ups of this one. And then after that, we'll go on to day six. Color makes me happy. Shimmer makes me happy. Shine makes me happy. <laughs> Okay, here we go with day six. Now this footage is, is from the live show when I was showing how to alter different backgrounds to get a start to your pages. It was, it was about beginning, it was about starting. And I'm using some alcohol ink and I also have 91% alcohol in a spray bottle. And then I have this thing, it's, um, I think it was called a Blitzy or something like that, but it was, you put a marker in it and then you can use it kind of as a, a, a sprayer. It would, it would puff air over the marker and then make kind of an airbrushing effect. But I'm not using it for that. I'm just using it for the air to push the alcohol and the alcohol ink around and um, make kind of a, uh, it looks kind of like watercolor a little bit, but it's alcohol ink. So then therefore it's permanent. And I used three different colors. I started with kind of a light green and then I used a lighter turquoisey blue and then this darker blue. And if you really want to get some interesting air effects with your alcohol ink by blowing it around and making shapes, you can use canned air. Um, you know, it comes in a can and, and it's compressed and it blows a lot harder than this thing. This thing you have to pump the bulb to do it. So then uh, much later, <laughs> I'm going to use this page. This is how it ends up looking when it's dry. I decided to, uh, rather than use it horizontally like I have been flipping through the book, I decided that I would turn it and make it um, a vertical presentation of the page. You can always turn your page. It doesn't have to stay the same every time. So uh, that's what I did. I wanted to make it up and down because I just wanted to do a little illustration. And um, I found a quote, the, the uh, prompt for day six is understanding. And wow, there's so many things you could do with that. I couldn't, I couldn't narrow it down. So I looked for a quote and I found a quote that I like. The fact that you're willing to say, I do not understand is the greatest understanding you could ever exhibit. That's so true. If you, you know, if you're willing to ask a question and not be fearful that 
the question is dumb or that that um, you're not going to get the response that you want. If you're willing to say, I don't understand it, and search for whatever type of research you need to figure it out, then you are really exhibiting understanding of a problem. And I, I kind of learned that from my kid. He's he's getting his doctorate in mathematics. <laughs> he's a graduate student. And, you know, he's willing to ask questions and do research and figure out things rather than just saying, you know, I don't understand and just give it up. He he will go and he'll find out the answer. He's always been stubborn like that. And that's really a great way to approach life. There's so many things to learn. If we stop learning, then what are we going to do? We're going to be super bored if we stop learning. So that's what this quote is about to me anyway. Um, I decided to draw a fairy girl type drawing just because it's just sounded fun. And I also wanted to use washi tape. You know, we all collect this washi tape. We have endless amounts of washi tape, right? I mean, most of us do as craft hoarders because it's so pretty. It's colorful, has designs, it's pretty. Sometimes we make our own washi tape with the gel plate. You know, washi tape is awesome, but then it sits around because it's really hard to use up a roll of washi tape, especially if you hardly ever use it. So I decided to decorate the wings of my fairy person using uh, greens, blues, turquoise type colors. And how I did that was I took a piece of, of deli paper, which is translucent, I could see through it, and I traced over the wings and I also traced over the dress. And then I used that to apply the washi tape to and then I trimmed it out and I will glue it down and so I put stripes of washi tape on the wings cut them out then I wanted to do kind of like a um, a ruffle if you've ever sewn a ruffle it kind of you kind of push it through and lap it over and lap it over to make this like ruffly shape and I thought you could do that with tape as well so I'm on the wings, I used a glue stick. Just I just don't trust washi tape. I think it comes undone. It doesn't have a very strong adhesive. So I glued it down with a permanent glue stick. And then, then I was doing the same on the dress, but then I decided I would use an even stronger glue, which is tacky, uh, tacky glue, craft glue. It's a strong stuff and it will help stick these little ruffles down, especially because I'm folding each one. And so then the, on the insides of the folds, the stickiness is lost. So there's even less sticky stuff sticking that down. So I used uh, pinks, reds, um, there's a little bit of gold and yellow on one of the pieces, orangey, you know, warm colors. So the wings I did in cool colors and the dress I'm doing in warm colors. And just going along and putting all the ruffles down, then I put like a little gold strip on there of a, a narrow um, washi tape that's metallic gold. And then on the top part, I didn't ruffle. I just put them on there straight. But I did overlap so that I could get a few different uh, patterns on there on the top too. And I ended at the top with the same one at the bottom for continuity. So then I glue all this stuff down with tacky glue. I was considering getting out matte medium and doing that whole thing, but I thought, eh. I got the glue right here. So I put the tacky glue where the drawing lines were and smeared it down with my finger to make sure it was all completely covered and then put my pieces on, glued them down. So now I have all this pattern and color uh, uh, from washi tape, which I think looks cool. That's a good use of washi tape. You know, if you're, <laughs> if you're gonna have it, you might as well use it. <laughs> I might use it some more in this, uh, this month for something. I don't know. We'll see. So I had already used some uh, ac acrylic paint to put a coat of skin color over the face, the arms, and the legs of the girl. Here I'm just putting some shadows around just to see what it would look like. Uh, then I decided I better go and finish the rest of the coloring before I finish the outside shadows because that didn't make any sense. 
I'm using some uh, orangish stuff, orangish reddish, mixed with a little bit of the portrait pink on the hair. I want her to have red hair and I will do more to that. But having that acrylic base down covers up the blue and green and everything in the background so that I can work over the top of it. Then I took a permanent marker and draw, drew around my shape, uh, making illustration lines. I just like it, <laughs> so I do it. Uh, this is medium bullet tip pit pen, which is an India ink pen that then becomes permanent when it's dry. You can smear a little bit before it dries, but once it's dry, it's permanent. Of course, it's acting up because I'm writing over stuff and it's picking it up on the tip and you know, you know how pins work. I'm constantly pushing the limits of my pins because I don't have very much patience. Then I got out my Faber-Castell pit brush markers. This is a whole set of them and I'm using them to add uh, shadow, add um, color, add more dimension and layers of color to my image. I use the skin tone one to add some shadows because it's darker than the skin that I painted on there. I use blue to add some shadows to the wings um, just to make them more dimensional. This is stuff that I like to do when I, you know, even with my collage, I do this type of stuff. So it's a similar thing. I like shadows and highlights. I think everything looks more dimensional. I decided she needed uh, features on her face. So I use a, a mechanical pencil at first, which has a very fine tip to draw my features. And then and I get out an extra small bullet pin and um, draw them over with black. Then use the brush markers to add color, shadow, uh, pink on the lips, pink on the cheeks, and then shadow with the skin tone marker, which like I said before, is darker than the paint on there. I can use my water brush to blend these markers, even though they are a permanent marker, they're not permanent till they're dry. They're India ink, just like the smaller illustration pins. So I can use the water in my water tank brush to blend them before they're dry. You can also blend them with your finger, but on something so small as that face, I mean, it's like an inch. <laughs> um, better to use a brush, a water brush, than it is to, to try to put my big fat finger in there and blend it. I also add some red and some warm brown colors to the hair to make it more dimensional. Add, add in some more interest and, in, you know, shadows, <clears throat> colors. So now she has kind of long red hair. I like the contrast between the cool background and the warm foreground. Um, the dress and the hair are warm colors. So I think that looks good for contrast. I'm also going to put shadows around the outside to make her stand out from the background using that same Stabilo All Pencil and my water brush. It's the black Stabilo All Pencil. Very, very water reactive pencil. Way more than anything else. <laughs> you put the water on there, that thing spreads. I'll tell you what. It's a fun thing to do on the outside of your images to make them blend into the background a little bit better and not look so much like they're stuck on there. So to finish this page, after I'm done with all the, sh the coloring, um, I do look for something to put on the belt to make like a belt uh, uh, buckle. And that ends up being a stick on pearl that I find on my desk. I also, while I was messing around on my desk, found a little pink flower and I decided to add that to um, the lower corner. And then I, uh, I put ink around the edges, black ink around the edges to balance the black that I had put around the girl. Oh, of course I have to have white Posca pin highlights. I forgot about that. 
So I'm almost done with the image itself. And then I'm going to use a Brother P Touch label maker to put on my quote. The fact that you're willing to say, I do not understand, is the greatest understanding you could ever exhibit. So I hope you guys are enjoying this video and this series. Please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Describe, subscribe. <laughs> Describe subscribing <laughs> if you haven't already. And turn on the notification bells and share and pin this on Pinterest. All those things that really help me out. Um, something else that I wanted to point out um, as I'm going through the videos, uh, we've been doing a version of our journal, journal habit for this is the fifth year. So I've been going back on my videos and I've been finding the videos from previous years that were from the same day, obviously different prompts, but I think it's kind of fun to look back and see what was done on the sixth last year or on the sixth year before or on the sixth year before that. So if I can find it, if it's well labeled, I can find it that I've been putting those in the, uh, the, the I cards and also on the end screen uh, at the very end of the video there'll be a couple links there's always a couple links and I I often do this I go and find things that are from the previous year whether it was pick a stick challenge or something I find ones that are from the previous year and I don't know that people necessarily notice that so that's why I'm telling you is uh, look for the I cards look for the links at the end screen to find out what happened last year at the same time that's it for me thanks bye-bye